frequently hear about the term food scarcity. We hear this, you know, at the U.S. level, and we even hear it uh, now as a major area of interest for the University of Nebraska-Lincoln and within the Institute of Agriculture and Natural Resources. I think one of the fundamental questions we have to ask is, what do we mean when we say food scarcity? And we need food for our energy, uh, for our nutrition, and things like that. We have a feedback mechanism in our, in our bodies. It's a, it's a t ticking clock that tells us, you know, every three or four or five hours we're hungry. We need food, and we need that in order to meet our energy and, and nutritional needs. So the word food to me is, you know, one of the essential things that we need. It's about number four on the list, and uh, our bodies tell us if we don't have it, you know, we're in trouble. Then we get into human institutions. So for the individual, what is known by international organizations, World Trade Organization, Nation, World Trade Organization and others that have studied this, is that the need for calories, the minimum calories per day that they recommend is 2,100 calories per day for energy. And then in addition to that, there are nutritional needs, nourishment nutritional needs. If they take all the food that's produced in the world and they divide it by the number of people, the World Trade Organization, WTO, has estimated that there are 2,750 calories of food available per day per capita. But the distributional issue is that that's not evenly distributed across the landscape of the world. Let's take Thailand, for example. Thailand is a country where I actually had my first job. I was employed by Iowa State University, but went to work in the Ministry of Agriculture in Bangkok, Thailand, and worked on a project there to help them do some technical analysis and develop policy in their country. And <clears throat> interestingly enough, I could, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna show you something here. I'm gonna pull my billfold out. It, it looks kind of old and, and worn, <clears throat> But in my billfold here, I actually have a map of the country of Thailand, and I got this when I worked in Thailand. It's made out of elephant leather, and it's still working just fine today. Okay. <clears throat> so Thailand is a country, it is a major rice producing country. When I was there, they had 40 million people. Uh, about four to five million lived in Bangkok. That was the major city. Uh, and they produced enough rice within their country to be able to feed all of their population and still export about 10 percent of the rice that they produced. And they were very sensitive to the cost of food in that country. For example, <clears throat> the one thing that I learned, and it was really a discovery for me, in the United States today, we spend less than 10 percent of our income on food, both food that we consume at home and food taken away from home when we eat out. 10% of it, less than 10%. So many of us, on average, don't think about that. In Thailand, when I was there, the average consumer was spending up to 50% of their income on food. Now think about that. What if you were spending 50% of your income on food in the United States? You would be very sensitive to the availability and the price of food. Let's go to the United States and talk about the United States because we know in the United States that we have natural resource endowments. We have human and government institutions that have developed over the decades to uh, support production agriculture. Uh, we have surplus production. We have, <coughs> we have a safety net for, for farmers. Um, they do in Europe as well. In Europe, they call it the Common Agricultural Policy, uh, so they can meet their food needs. And like I say, in the U.S., food is a low-cost item for most of us. And so Nebraska, the beauty of Nebraska is we can be a laboratory, if you will, with our research to help those other parts of the world meet their food needs. You know, our Water for Food Institute, that's not focused on how do we use water in the state of Nebraska. That's focused on what we've learned from using water in the state of Nebraska to how we can apply that 
to other countries of the world where water is a critical short resource. And we, we transfer, if you will, that experience to help those other countries. What's the metaphor? You know, you, you give somebody a fish and you, you, know, you feed them for a meal, but you, give them, uh, you show them how to fish and they learn to feed themselves. So that's the long term is sort of the latter part of that. In the short run, though, there are still uh, humanitarian aid programs that the U.S. government has that provides commodities and food to countries in need at terms that are, that are you know, very, very favorable, if you will.